Hi, I'm Kurt Kruger, and I'm going to offer you something you've never, ever been taught in school. Would you like to have something to work at getting you to have one or more grade points higher? Does that sound uh, useful for you? It would have been useful for me in my schooling, and I only have three college degrees. I've taught for 47 years, and I've asked students all my life, from middle school to university, if they've ever been taught how to concentrate. Not a single one. Not a single one in 47 years. So, would you like to learn how to concentrate and improve your possibly your IQ up to 20 points higher? Not only learning how to concentrate, but learn how to be able to have your IQ go up. How would you like to be able to have it so you get not only one grade boy and higher, but more? How would you like to have it so that you would be even happier? There's something called positive psychology. There's something called nutrition. Very few people know much about nutrition, including doctors. Doctors, basically, they learn about an hour of nutrition in their medical school time that make them a doctor. And that's why they prescribe drugs instead of food. But that's another topic. You can research that, too, if you'd like. And I'd love you to research each one of the things that I offer you. So right now, I'll give you one simple practice for concentration. And it involves something that's going to be interdisciplinary. So I'm going to describe things that deal with your body, mind, and spirit. I like to be able to move a little bit, and so does everybody who's young. I'm only 70, so everybody... Younger usually wants to be able to move, especially younger, younger people. But they're always told to sit down. If you get up every 15 to 20 minutes in a classroom and do a simple cross crawl, lift your knee up as you breathe out, lift your knee up as you breathe out, and as you're standing up, you're breathing in. Lift your knee up as you breathe out, lift your knee up as you breathe out, but as you stand up, you're breathing in. What do you do at that time? You're doing a cross crawl movement, just like crawling on the floor when you were a little child. And you get to be able to make it so your neocortex, your frontal brain, the right and left hemispheres of your neocortex, they get balanced and they have a synapse happen. They have a communication happen between those two sides. So you're opening up your learning centers of your brain. Dr. John Ratty of Harvard University, you can look him up in his book, Spark. You can look up any other research that I refer to and verify it. You can research the opposite and see if you can find anything like that that refutes any of the work that I talk about. But that work, that simple cross crawl, opens up all your learning centers. Basically, when you're sitting down in this nice class seat, and you're usually not even sitting straight with your spine erect, you're slouching in your seat. And if you're slouching in your seat, what happens? You're crunching up your internal organs. Your internal organs don't have much space to move in. And the Lungs are trying to breathe, but you don't know they're trying because they do it anyway. And if you're sitting up straight with your spine erect and you get used to it, that does take time because you've been slouching for so long and your muscle structure has been used to that. When you sit up straight, you've opened up your chest cavity. You've made it so you, if you're breathing through your nose, you're bringing more of the oxygen to the lower lobes of your lungs, where more of the air sacs are, where you can then get more oxygen into your blood, and the oxygen goes to the most needed place in your body first. I can't say first, but it goes more of it goes to the place needed most. Your brain uses more of the any other organ in your body of the oxygen. But also if you're injured. You get to be able to have your knee repair like mine repaired so quickly. But that's if you're learning to breathe properly. That simple cross-crawl movement helps us focus on the breath, oxygenates our system, brain gets all that, opens up all the learning centers, and we're able to learn a lot easier and better. That's Dr. John Ratty's work. It's just a little taste of honey. Now, getting to the point of concentration. This is super important because if you can't concentrate, how can you learn? So, if you will, take your left hand facing you. 
whenever you get to be distracted in class, sit here and put your left hand facing you, put your right forefinger at the base of your little finger, and as you breathe in, and as you breathe out, move your finger across, as you breathe in, you go up, as you breathe out, you go down, as you breathe in, you go up, as you breathe out, you go down. As you do this, slowly going up and down, as you get to the thumb, you go across that thumb as you breathe in, as you breathe out, as you breathe in, as you breathe out. There's a pause in your breath, and most people don't pay attention to that pause, where you are just at the top and at the bottom as you're breathing. There's a pause. It's a very special place where your thoughts come from. And you can walk your finger across what I taught a bunch of teachers for the last number of years in Los Angeles Unified School District, peak performance for academics and sports. Never had a coach come to it, even though I've trained world record holders and Olympians and professional athletes. But you walk yourself across one to two times, and your mind is calmer. Why? If you look at it, your breathing calmed down because you were concentrating on the breath. Your heart rate therefore calms down. It's coincidental, as they say. And coincidentally, the brain waves calm down when the heart rate calms down, when the breathing calms down. So these little two practices will allow you to be able to learn to concentrate better, to refocus your mind. Now, if you're in undergraduate work and even graduate work, if you're in secondary schools or lower, you might have a chance when somebody upsets you. If somebody upsets you, instead of seeing how you can move your fist fast, it's better instead to stop before anything causes trouble. What can you do to stop the anger? Ah, thump your thymus. Not exactly like Tarzan, but what does thumping your thymus do? And what is your thymus, and where is it? One hand underneath your throat, right at the base of your hand, two inches below your breastbone is your thymus. It's a modulator of your endocrine system. Your endocrine system helps to be able to modify the production of adrenaline in your body, and it makes it so your body stops the overproduction of adrenaline when you thump the thymus firmly. And then you can focus on the breath for a moment, get clear what is best in the moment. What is best in the moment. 